Welcome to another episode of Make Shit Happen. Today's guest is Luis Diaz. Lewis is the founder of Top 10 Podcasts and author of How to Get Your First 100,000 Downloads in 100 Days. Lewis has launched and consulted for 130 plus podcasts and helped his clients generate over 14 million downloads. He's helped some of the most well-known entrepreneurs and personal brands online build their podcast from NFL athletes, Olympic medalists, nine-figure entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and many more thought leaders across a dozen or more industries. Lewis started with an $11 course on Udemy and has now turned this into a global business. Uh, Lewis, thanks for coming on today's uh, podcast. Really appreciate you coming on, man. Sam, uh, this is this is fun because I uh, first of all didn't wake up thinking of this this was going to happen. So thank you for having me, man. Um, and excited to be here. Yeah, no, it was very uh, very last minute. So I appreciate you coming <laughs> on, um, guys. That is a very exciting episode uh, for anyone that's wanting to launch, start, or scale a business. Lewis is the go to guy. He is the expert of the experts when it comes to podcasts. Ed has worked with some of the biggest guys in the business, like, like Rudy from More Capital. Um, he's worked with other guys like you know Sam Ovens and a bunch of other people that he's currently working with. Um, he is the go-to guy. If you want to launch, start, scale, or even get a top-ranked podcast, he is your man. Um, so again, Lewis, want to thank you for your time today and for coming on. Cool. Thank you, man. Um, it's been good fun. Yeah. So look, I think we'll dive straight in. When it comes to, I guess, launching and starting a podcast, like it's it's a very um, you know, podcasts weren't necessarily a massive thing, you know, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess, how did you, how did you start and how did you get into this business? Man, it was, so I wasn't on purpose. I was actually a broke personal trainer traveling. I was a mobile trainer. So I was, um, traveling, you know, down, up and down the South Florida coast, uh, training typically like elderly senior citizens, people who had a lot of money who moved down here from the North and, uh, was training them wanting to figure out how do I take this personal training business online? So I just came out of college, set the stage. This was 2015. Um, I had a college degree with no value to it. It was in hospitality. Uh, I did not care to go in that space. So I was literally training people, found this love in, in the gym, love working out, love working with, with people in the gym. Um, and I was like, well, how do I do this online? Because I see guys like uh, my first mentor, Vince Del Monte, um, guys like uh, Joel Marion, um, Craig Valentine, how are they making hundreds of thousands of dollars online? And I'm doing this thing, making maybe 30, 40 bucks a session, <laughs> driving up and down 20 minutes, 30 minutes, every client. Um, so I was really in that space. And I was trying to figure out like, well, I suck at audio or I suck at making videos because I was trying to make video content. I suck at writing. What exactly can I do to create content online that's going to get attention? Um, and that was kind of the, the first, the first you know, identification of like, here's the things I'm good at. Here's what I'm not good at. I knew I could talk to people in a party or like in a meeting or, you know, I'm really good at speaking to people, but I wasn't good at like any kind of anything else when it comes to video or audio. So I was speaking to a mentor, uh, who randomly, you know, one day came out of the blue and was nice enough to meet with me and chat with me about, he was, this is a guy doing seven figures online. He did mergers and acquisitions and he um, was actually a family friend. Okay. And I was telling him, I was like, Hey, like, I want to start my, I want to go online. I want to build this online business. He's like, well, why don't you start a podcast? And um, to, at the time I was listening to podcasts up and down during my commutes, you know, um, going to clients. I listened to a lot of marketing and sales podcasts, ones that you and I, Sam, have talked about, you know, mm -hmm. um, the uh, Grant Cardone's The World, Ed Milet's, I listened to you know Jordan Belfort's podcast at the time. So um, a lot of those. And I was like, great. You know, I love to start a podcast. I have no freaking clue where to start. So I had no audio background, no technical background. I just knew that you had to get a mic to start a podcast. <laughs> and that was pretty much <laughs> all I mic, knew. You'd be right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So um, that, that was it. And I, I bought a uh, $11 course on Udemy, um, taught myself how to do it. And then I failed miserably. <laughs> yeah, so wow. that, was the, that was the first part, man. The first part was getting there and just having that first uh, taste of failure. Yeah, wow. That's, uh, that's quite a jump. I mean, a lot of people would 
see the tech side of most businesses, especially things like podcasts or mm. YouTube channels, and they just run straight in the other direction from things like that. So that would have been quite um, quite the learning curve. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the failure was the first part. I think I got like my first show, like 14 episodes and realized it was taking me, Sam, like four to five hours per, per episode to produce one. I was a one man band. Wow. Uh, this is a very shoestring budget. Um, was like trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, and I gave up. And the reason why is because was, there was no system behind it. I was just doing everything mm. myself. And I wasn't seeing the traction I wanted to see. Mm. So, so that was like the first kind of like, ah, oh, like this is tough. This is harder than it looks. And I think like most people get into it and like, this is harder than it seems like, <laughs> you know, these. Uh, yeah. You know? I mean, looking for me with my podcast, it's, it's been a, a massive learning curve for myself and yeah. um, it, it's not as simple as just getting up and picking up a mic and, and just start <laughs> recording. Oh, I wish it was, but it's not. Right. Exactly. Um, so, so, so obviously you started, you failed. What mm -hmm. made you start back up again? Uh, it was the fact that there was, there was something inside of my failure that I knew was good. So like fail, like I didn't get the result of like becoming Joe Rogan or becoming massive at, yeah. at the beginning. No, the, the, the potential I saw in it though, through the failure was that like, a, like you can make a system out of this. I just done a shitty job of that up until now. B it is scalable. Cause it's my message to millions or message to many people. I don't have to say mm -hmm. it a bunch of times. I'm not going one-to-one. -one. I'm going one-to-many now. Um, yeah. and see, I did see some traction on some episodes that were, were working. Like I saw, I could tell by the data that some people like these, like talks about maybe, you know, um, habits for fat loss versus mindset. I, I could see trends in data much faster than I did. If I was looking at like my Facebook audience or my Instagram audience at the time. So I saw potential. I just realized like I hadn't been doing it the right way. So I took a couple months off. I started studying guys like Tim Ferriss, um, all of the bigger podcasts that are in the top charts. And I figured like, what are they doing is right? Well, number one, what, are they, what they're doing is they're not talking about things that maybe they necessarily love. They're talking mm -hmm. about things that get clicks, things that get people's attention, get eyeballs. So instead of focusing a lot of the work on the post-production, I started focusing my work on like, well, what, what kind of research should I be doing before an episode? What, can I go to subreddits? Can I go to Google? Can I find out what people are already interested in? And then I just talk about that. So instead of trying to build it and they will come, I started to figure out where they're already at yeah. and then just put my content there. Meaning like I, I just talked about what exactly people wanted to know. For me, I was a 25 year old guy helping men with fat loss. Every one of my clients at the time wanted to know how to get a six pack. Yeah. And they didn't want to know how to help their gut health. They didn't want to know how to how to eat more veggies. They didn't want to know how to improve their cholesterol. They wanted to know, Lewis, how do I get a freaking six pack? Mm, yeah. So I just approached, I just gave that, fed them what they wanted to have. And then obviously we talked about other things, but the, the second show was called Ask the Ab Guy. It was all about how to get a six pack. Very simple. <laughs> that was the premise of the show. Uh, ask the Ab Guy. <laughs> ask the Ab Guy. Like it's like Ask Gary V. Um, Love it. Yeah. So it had a picture of me of a six pack and in the beginning in the front, that was funny. Um, those are the fitness dates. But the, 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 the reason why it was successful is because it was a simple, high value conversation or not even a conversation. It was just me, usually not a lot of interviews. But the reason why that show was successful is because it was really simple, high value concept. You know, um, nowadays it's a bit harder. Like you have to have a little bit more of differentiation. But 2016, 2017, when I was doing this, if you had a clear message, and I think this is still true to a certain degree, clear message that is important to the audience and you convey it in a way that's interesting and fun, then you can have a successful show. Um, so that was really, they got me in, got me going. So, so for someone that is just starting off or for someone that's wanting to start a podcast on a particular uh, topic, like, like let's just say it's, it's, it's fat loss and they, right. um, they want to talk about the, the health and fitness industry. For someone that's just starting off, like in your way, like what would you what would you tell them to get their first hundred thousand downloads and to get ranked? Like what should they be focusing on? What should they be doing? Right. And what and what kind of guests do you think they should be trying to land, or should they just be talking mm. to, to doing like interviewing themselves and talking about this particular topic? Gotcha. So when you get to hundred thousand, like the the road to your first maybe hundred downloads is different from the road to the first one thousand to ten thousand which is different from ten thousand to hundred thousand 
So it's definitely, right. there's, there's definitely levels to it. Um, but let's start out with the idea. You have to kind of stress test your idea. Is your idea valuable? Can I go on Facebook and talk about this topic? And will people comment or people engage? Will I get conversations in my DMs? So for me, getting started is really around how do we validate and get a good idea? Mm. And you know that maybe it's conversations with other people about a certain topic. You can interview people around their failure, around their the biggest, the most money they've lost, the most money they've made, the biggest mistake they've made in their business. You know, what is the what is the the concept and the unique idea that is going to separate you from other people? Can we test that on places like Instagram, Facebook, email lists, Pinterest, something? Um, that's where it starts. Once you have that idea validated, um, it's going to come down to, and especially in the beginning when you launch your podcast, it's going to come down to manual work. Like, am I sending this to my email list? Am I sending this to DMs and people? Like, if someone reaches out to you, Sam, and they're asking you questions about selling and real estate, commercial real estate and what you do, it's like, okay. Um, can I send them an e and a mess, like a, a, a link with a podcast episode? It's like, Hey, listen to this episode I talk about in the show. That's how you're going to get your first couple hundred downloads per, per episode is manually doing the work, pushing the show on your channels, but also pushing it to individuals when people reach out to you, or when you, even when you have a conversation with somebody in a restaurant or at a, at a networking meeting, and you have a few episodes that help them like send them the individual links. So when we get to like ground zero, that's the first, that's the first like manual work part. The second part is going to be creating a high value incentivized contest or giveaway. For me, these work because these are, these are going to provide a ton of value for people who are listening. Um, and it's going to give them a reason to actually come back and actually, you know, do what you want them to do, which is going to be subscribe or follow yeah. Yeah. And, and leave a review that we can get more social proof on your podcast. So those. Go ahead. You got a question? Yeah. So, like so let's let's say where it's in the fitness industry, right? And we're sure. like, um, ask the ad person. Or, yeah. Um, it, for you, if you want to start to show on that, like, what what would a giveaway look like for something like that? Yeah. So if my audience is say is like is men or women who want to get you know abs or want to lose weight, it could be supplements. It could be one of my training programs. Maybe it's a bundle. Um, yep. You know, a bundle of those things. First, second, third prize get a bundle, a fat loss bundle. It's going to help them lose weight in the first 30 to 60 days. Um, it could be a one-on-one -on -one coaching session. You know, I, I'd say for, for people, if you have a massive audience or you have an audience that already loves you and they want to, they're already in your DMs, you could yeah. give away a free training session and that would be a high value for them. If you have nobody coming knocking at your door for that, then it's probably not going to be <laughs> good. You giving it away for free. Like, no one's <laughs> yeah, already yeah. asking for it. So it's, it's not really, really valuable. Um, but things that are tangible, things that give me what I call like quick wins. So mm -hmm. if you can get somebody a quick win, like supplements, um, pro training programs, things like that are quick win uh, products that you can give. Um, also, you can partner, which is a really good thing here. You can partner with a supplement company and say, hey, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm going to be promoting your stuff on my podcast for free. All I ask in return is that you um, share the podcast with your audience and um, give me some free stuff. Or if, 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 even if you don't want to get like ask that, you can say, hey, I'll buy two or three things of your supplements or yep. your programs. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll give them away to my audience. All I ask for you is to share it, reshare the posts on your Instagram. Yep. Now you're getting, yep. tapping into thousands of new people um, that are on their, on their social. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously create your offer, your message, yep. work out who you're targeting, um, how you're going to create value, do the giveaway. What, what's, what's the next step from there? From the next step from there, so we validated our concept. We've, we've, got, so we've done some manual work here. Like every, every week we're sending links to people. We're sending the show out to different channels, email, social. Um, we've got our giveaway. We've ran that. First of all, mm -hmm. to, to leave off on the giveaway, you can run that multiple times. So you can run that once a quarter as a, as a, as a bonus to your audience. And now they know yep. that, hey, like Sam's going to be giving away some cool shit. So I should actually listen and pay attention. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's, I think people think it's gimmicky and it is but it works. Like I know massive shows that have used that to kind of jumpstart and, and uh, kind of kickstart the flywheel so that mm. people can actually see, people can actually, are actually going to get, um, get, at, get in front of it, in front of the podcast. So once we've done that kind of stuff, we want to start getting on other podcasts. And for people at different stages, like maybe if you already have a, an audience somewhere else, it may be easy to start with this now, but getting on other podcasts 
as well as organizing swaps with other shows. Meaning, hey, your show is about sales, my show is about marketing, but we're talking yeah. about maybe we're both talking to dentists, we're both talking to people in the medical in the medical space. Why don't we do a swap and we promote each other because we have the same damn audience? So that's that's the kind of thing I would do as well as getting on other podcasts and doing swaps. And that's kind of like a regular recurring thing. Um, mm. You're not going to see, and, and this is something people always, I always think we forget is like, you're not going to see an average of a hundred listeners or X amount of listeners flow over to your show after every podcast, you're going to yeah. have like five that are bombs. And then one that's going to give you thousands of listeners. And then you're going to have another six more that are bomb. And then another one's going to be a 200 listeners. So it's kind of like a up and down kind of thing. Up and down. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's reps. But that combined with the swaps is what's going to get you to that next level of getting a couple of thousand listeners per episode, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 listeners. And now we can start to maybe partner with some other, other, other brands that have a product that we can give away and say, Hey, can you promote us on your email list or your social channels? And then you continue to level up and grow. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So let's say they've grown the podcast. They've done their first, say, 20, 30 episodes, 50 episodes, yep. they're wanting to uh, start monetizing the podcast that they want to start making some money and actually making this not just a, a project hobby. or a side thing or a hobby, <laughs> they actually yeah. want to turn this into an income. Yeah. What in your, and we were discussing this before we went live, but what, mm -hmm. what in your words or in your way, like what would you think is the easiest way to start turning a profit with podcasts? Yeah. So I'll take it back to how I did it first. Yep. So I, didn't really offer anything for the first maybe 20 or 30 episodes, if I recall it. Uh, and then I started to get people reaching out to me. What I would do first, here's what I would do. I would re ask people to reach out to me, especially if I'm a coach, consultant, expert in something. I'm going to say, hey, reach out to me in my DMs. You have a specific question on this episode. I'm not looking to make a sale right now. I'm looking to make a conversation. Because mm -hmm. as you know, conversations lead to questions, which lead to sales. Absolutely. So, so I want people in my DMs. I want people in my email list. So that's what, I, that's what I did. I said, hey, if you have a question on this, you want to dive deeper, then ask, you know, then go ahead and shoot me a message. Here's my email. Here's my DM. And I would get people coming into my DMs like, hey, Lewis, listen to the episode, blah, 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 blah. And then I would just answer their question, help them out. And then say, hey, if you want to jump in deeper, I can happen to jump on a call. And I would jump on calls with people and close them for sales, close them as new clients. Um, and that's how I monetize my first podcast. So it doesn't need to be like a hypey thing. Like it can be, we can make an offer. Like I said before, like we can definitely make a, a really unique offer. Um, yeah. But depending on your selling style and depending on your, your industry, some people, if you're like in the medical industry, you know, I don't know if people are going to give, you know, buy if you give them 10% off, you know, if you're, yeah. a, if you're a high ticket coach. So yeah. it depends on your, in your, on your market, but. One way is more consultative, more it's like you're, you're looking for inbound traffic, asking them to shoot you a DM or a message. Yep. Super simple way. Other way is saying, hey, I have this cool thing. I have a course or you, know, you do like a commercial in the middle of the episode that talks about the course, but then also incentivizes the podcast listeners with a unique discount or a unique bonus. Like, hey, mm -hmm. if you buy my course and you say you're a podcast listener, I'm going to give you an extra free 30 minute coaching session with me one on one just for, as a thank you for listening to the show and being a listener and being a yeah. subscriber. Yeah. So you can incentivize your inbound route, very consultative. Hey, ask me a question or B, we can promote and make an offer and give them an, ex, an extra incentive for uh, buying your course or product, whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that, that's awesome. That's a really good idea, actually. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to, you know, landing guests, right? So yeah. when people start out, um, like, you know, with my show, you know, start off the bat, you know, there might be 10, 15 people, maybe even less, maybe five people that, that, that somebody knows that they can get on the, the podcast, like straight away. Right. When it comes to having consistent guests, and that's the other thing too, like with podcasts, is your suggestion to be releasing episodes weekly, fortnightly, monthly? Right. Good question. So it depends on your goals. If you're okay. saying, hey, I want to be top 10, top 15 we got to release a lot of content because here's the thing. The algorithm and Apple podcast works like this. They don't give a damn what you did a week ago, two months ago, three months ago. They really don't care. At least in Apple podcast. I don't, I can't speak for Spotify or their other charts, but for Apple, they're looking at what you did 
basically in the next, in the last 24 to 72 hours. So meaning we need to have a ton of traffic flowing through in the next, in the, in the, in the, like the right now, the right now, it's like the last couple of days. This is why guys like Joe Rogan or before we we went exclusively to Spotify, NPR, all these big networks, they have a ton of traffic flowing through them because they have an email list. They have, um, they'll have sometimes, you know, cross promotions going out all the time. They'll have ads running. So they're, they're constantly marketing which gives them an advantage because they're always getting inbound inbound leads, inbound subscribers, inbound listeners. Whereas like the normal like uh, you know podcaster is probably getting you know a pop in episode and downloads once a week when they release a show. Mm. All that to say if we want to be top 10, if we want to um, you know I think the original question was really around like how do we what, what should we release? How often should we release? It depends on your goals. So if we're looking for top ranking podcasts, we're we're going to be releasing two maybe three times a week. Um, yeah, wow. you know, if, if that's, that's generally the, the case, if you're looking for maybe top 100, but you're in a niche, a niche topic, like I have a client right now that does, they sell sewing machines and they're top 15, top 20 in the, in the automotive industry all the time. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> I that's know. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. I'm interviewing him, uh, next, I think tonight actually. Yeah. So, um, very niche topics. He can get away with once a month. Like this guy, you know, does once or twice a month and he's in the top 100. So. If you're looking just to monetize, then you could probably do it fortnightly, you know. Um, but I'm saying if you're going to get in the top ten, top twenty, top one hundred, it's going to be at least once a week show, most likely. Being in the top, say, to say top top one to ten, mm-hmm. does that give you more exposure on the platforms? It gives you more exposure on a site called Chartable as well as the platform. So, the way Apple. So the way a lot of people find podcasts is by looking at like the you know top ranked podcasts in their space. One of the biggest sites they use in that is called Chartable, which tracks all the podcasts in the world. What they so that site has hundreds of thousands of clicks and downloads and, and people going to it looking for a top ranked podcast. So it gives you more exposure on Chartable, and then yep. inside of Apple, it does give you more exposure because they do rank their podcasts. If you go to like the top charts inside of Apple, I will say. Right. Um, I find Chartable much easier to navigate than Apple Podcasts. So if I'm a listener, maybe because I'm a more of advanced podcast listener and I know the tools, yeah. you know, I go to Chartable then before I go to Apple because their their search function is is crap. So it does give you more exposure in the short. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And and when it comes to, I guess the most uh, the dominant platform for for podcasters at the moment, what would you say that is Apple Podcasts? It still is Apple Podcasts, but there's still there's a Spotify that's coming up really really strong. Um, they're doing a lot of cool things when it comes to buying other companies. So they're kind of buying like you know they bought Riverside and they bought Chartable. So they're buying all these making all these cool acquisitions just for podcasters. So they're probably going to be the dominant player in podcast in about a couple of years, I would say. Um, yeah, I don't cool. see Apple holding on to that, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. But as of right now, Apple's still the the biggest one. Uh, Spotify is pretty close behind it when it comes to listeners or it comes to like, you know, people who use the app. And then there's Google Podcasts, which is kind of a, a from what I see, a distant third. But those yeah, are the awesome. main three. And, and I guess with a lot of people, depending on what, what um, you know, niche that they're in, whether it's, you know, sales, marketing, um, podcasting, mm-hmm. or the automotive industry, that there, there'd be a lot of, I guess, a list of, a list guests that people want to have on like the, you know, the yep. top guns of their industry per se. Yep. Um, like for instance, if we're talking about business that could be like a, you know, a, a Grant Cardone or, or Jordan, Jordan Belford, for example. Yeah. Um, it, it, people that are wanting to land, I guess, these high A list um, guests to have on their show, mm-hmm. what would be your strategy for trying to get these people on? Yeah. So for high A list guests, if you want to get somebody who's, you know, a, you know, a, brand name or like, a, you know, like an industry name that's well, well known. There's yeah. two main ways I would look at getting them. Number one is going to be, can I meet them in person somewhere? Can I go to an event and get one-to-one face-to-face, not behind a screen with them and ask them, Hey, I have a show that gets around X amount of listeners per month. Would, would you be open for a 15 minute interview? And I say 15 minutes because these guys are super busy. If I ask them for an hour of their time, they're going to say, no way. Yeah. Like no one random person is going to ask for an an hour of my time. (laughs) Yeah. So 15 (laughs) minutes, this is how I got guys like um, Elliot Hulson on on my podcast, who's a major uh, YouTube YouTuber. 
I asked him for 15 minutes of his time, not an hour, not 30, not 40. Because he wasn't going to give me that. He's a fitness guy, right? Yep, he's a fitness guy. Yep. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah um, Elliot Hulse. So that's the first thing. Can I see them in person? Can I pay for an event, get behind VIP access, whatever I need to do, or fly out to them to say, hey, I'll, I'll interview you. I'll fly out. My team will fly out. That automatically puts you way above everyone else. Everybody else is asking for an interview, a small interview online or something. So if you can separate yourself by getting in front of them, either by inviting them that way in person or getting to an event and seeing them, do that. Second way to get A-listers, and I'm saying A-listers because like, they're a little bit different from how they handle their relationships generally from other people. Um, the other way is to get a personal introduction, meaning do I know somebody in their network that can promote me? You know, we had a conversation around people that we knew mutually that could help you and us get more A-list guests on this show. And it's about getting those personal introductions that are going to help open the door. Because if I come in, if someone introduces you as an expert, as somebody who has an awesome podcast, then the person, let's just say it's like uh, an Ed Milet. You know, if, if someone introduces you to Ed it's going to look way better than you coming, you know, cold out of the blue saying, Hey, would love to have you on my podcast. I'm listening to you for five years. Right. But if somebody he respects comes on and says, Hey, check out Sam's show. It's amazing. He's a great guy. He's doing great things in Australia in the sales space. You know, that comes off, comes off a lot better. You look better. So yeah, personal introductions are going to, it's going to be meeting them in person and asking them that way. Yeah, Absolutely. And, and another thing too, I was looking at, don't quote me on these numbers, but um, <laughs> there was something like 2 million um, podcasts worldwide at the moment. And in relation to say YouTube, where there's, you know, say 25 million different YouTube channels. Yeah. Podcast is still a pretty new platform when it comes to how long it's been around versus say, you know, YouTube, Google, Facebook, Instagram, and all these other companies and, and, and I guess right. media outlets. Um Podcasts have grown exponentially over the past, say, five years. Um, yep. The growth in them has been quite substantial. Like you go to all the, you know, camera shops or the, um, you know, the the Harvey Normans or JB hi fires and things like that, and you mm -hmm. walk in and the first thing you see is a podcast kit or like a, you know, a vlogging kit for a phone that you can just snap and grab and start using. Yeah. Um, where do you see the podcast industry going over the next five to 10 years and how do you see it changing? Yeah, I see it becoming uh, very much like, because you, you have a lot of influencers and people who have like TV shows and people who are, you know, anchors on news stations coming in and commercializing it. And like, they're getting sponsored. People are basically, companies are basically paying them to start podcasts. And they're like, hey, we'll do everything for you. We'll get you on. Just use your audience to get us some sponsors and then we'll split the, split the revenue. So you see right. a lot of, bigger names, people who already have audiences from like movie actor, you know, actresses and actors and A-list celebrities coming in and doing that. And they're doing it for two reasons. Number one, somebody paid them to do it. Or number two, they have like a philanthropic drive to them. You know, yeah. some people are just like, Hey, like I want to talk to experts on, you know, cancer research. Yeah. So I see, I see it becoming very, very um, celebrity and influencer focused. So there's still going to be money. The money is going to be in the niches. It's going to be in the people who are like subject matter experts and who have a program or an offer or something that's going to separate them from the crowd. And the ones that are going to be people who are going to do things, do things a little bit differently. You know, they're going to add some unique elements to their show or make it fun and different. Um, Cause that's yeah. what we're going to stand out. Um, that's where I see the industry going. It's going to kind of get like, you have the influencers and big people over here. And then you have the indies who are experts or very, very, have very, very niche topics that attract a small loyal audience. Yeah, right. Okay, that's interesting because I think, um, you know, when Joe Rogan made that transaction over to, to Spotify for how, how, however many hundreds of millions it was, <laughs> yeah, um, like for me, that was the first time that I actually saw a value being put onto a podcast for yeah. a substantial amount of money and actually being bought. And, and that kind of, you know, clicked in my head that we're now seeing that the the information space in terms of, you know, podcasting and, and YouTubing, it does have actual value behind it in terms of, you know, a, a monetary value, um, yeah. depending on the size in terms of the audience, you know, the guests and, and who's, who's doing the interviews or whatever the, the actual topic is about. Um, were you quite shocked by, by that when you saw that? 
Um, I, I, I thought it was fun. I thought it was interesting to see it go. I kind of sucked to see it get pulled off of YouTube because I, I occasionally watched Joe Rogan um, mm. because he's just an amazing interviewer. But yeah. I, I, was, I was a little amazed. But it was, if you look at it, what they bought was they bought the attention of Joe Rogan. So they didn't buy the podcast. They just bought the attention, um, attention. Of, of, his, of his audience because he has massive attention and he's an amazing, uh, amazing host in what he does. Like people think it's easy, but it's like <laughs> he's been doing TV and, and, and hosting shows like this for a minute before and stand up comedy before that. So yeah, and I, I remember what seeing him on, um, I think it was Fear Factor was when yeah. I first came across Joe Rogan. Yeah. Um, and obviously now he's, he's commentating for the UFC, which is, you know, one of the biggest platforms in the world right now. Right. Um, and it's, yeah, it's quite exciting to see how things have, have changed in the podcast space. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's the biggest thing with him. They bought the attention. Yeah, abs- yeah absolutely. So, so, um, we'll just got a couple more questions left, but when it comes yeah. to, um, I guess your podcast at the moment, what are some of the things that you're implementing right now to, to help grow and scale your podcast? That's a great question. Great, great question. So one of the things I'm doing and, and playing around with, I'm still going to figure this out, is I want to create more highly produced shows. So more of like um, interviews that have like cut-ins with me giving commentary. So more like an NPR style feel, because that's A, harder to copy, and B, it just costs more money. So it's going to eliminate a lot of other people you know, who want to compete with me. So spending more time and money on figuring out how to do that, because that takes... It not only takes money, but it also takes hours. Like it takes, you know, a good five or six extra hours to edit, cut, produce, um, re-record things in those inter- and, and plan for those interviews. So I'm trying to do that. Um, that's one thing to make my show stand out that we're, we're still doing. I'm looking to hire somebody to actually help me do it. Uh, the second thing I'd say that we're doing right now is we're looking at what are some different channels that we can reproduce content on because everyone's. Reproducing content is not a secret. It's not, it's not unknown, but it, it's, it's looking at what specific channels. Is it TikTok Reels? Is it YouTube Shorts? Um, yeah. Can we create a lot of content? I'm talking like, like a daily clips, like you know, daily bite-sized episodes on. And what mm-hmm. will that do to our downloads? That's the second thing. Um, I've, I've got a guy I'm working with right now who's, who can do like a high number of clips and reels based off on podcasts and he's, and we're looking at like, how do we roll this out and get like a system for it? Um, the third thing is I've, I've tested a ton of ads, tested a ton of ads. What I've always found with ads is that they're, they're good to get a bump. They're hard to get listeners to stick so they can get listeners to your show. It's hard to get them to stick because they're so cold. They don't know who you are, why they, why you stick around. So unless you're someone who's amazing, they're going to drop off. Um, so ads aren't really the, where I want to go. The, the third thing I'm doing actually right now is, is kind of re, rebranding a little bit and looking at like, well, how do we change the artwork, change the look and feel of the show, change the copywriting, those kind of like bigger, bigger pieces. Those are the yeah. big, th- the, the main three things I'm looking at right now and doing and implementing in the next couple of months. Awesome. Awesome. Well, look, I just want to ask this last question. I, I want the audience to walk away with a bit of a game plan based off, you know, what we've just talked about. Um, if they want to start their podcast over the next, let's say 30 days. Yeah. Um, just keeping it real simple and as easy as possible. What, if you had to start your podcast from scratch today and launch over the next say 30 days, what would you do? I love it. I love this idea. So first thing I would do, first thing I would do was is to look at like, where in my topic, in my let's just say it's podcasting, who in my space on Instagram, I probably go on Instagram for this or, or TikTok, who in my space is getting the most engagement and what the hell are they talking about specifically? Yeah. So I know there's a guy in my space called, uh, names Travis. Um, his Instagram gets a lot of great, great um, engagement on some of the things he talks about in podcasting. Um, I would look at his Instagram, what topics, what posts have gone viral, what posts have gotten a lot of comments, likes, engagement. Um, and then I would start to formulate episodes based off that. So number one, find your topic. Number two, find somebody who's doing it really well. Um, you don't need to reinvent the wheel with this. Um, so that's the first thing I'd say, like what content is working already? I don't need to be unique or creative right now. I need to figure out like what is working. Number two, I would start to create content around that topic, similar to what the, the person who I'm looking at model it, what mm-hmm. they're doing, and then try to figure out a way to put a unique spin on it. 
maybe I can add a new segment to my podcast um, that's a little bit different and, and, and unique. Maybe I can add some higher production quality. Maybe I can do the interviews differently or have a different setup or background. So having a way to make my podcast unique to me is going to be the second piece here. So validate, test the idea, get something, get content that works, uh, create content number two and figure out a way to make it unique and di different to yourself. Um, that's the, the second thing. Um, I'd say the third thing is obviously setting up all the hosting stuff. So getting your mic, getting your hosting set up. I use Captivate. Um, if you want to find really good guests that are going to maybe be uh, on your podcast, I'd suggest a site called Guestio. Um, you can get name guys like Manny Pacquiao or big, big names on there. If you wanted to like pay top dollar for your guests, um, yeah, wow. those guys aren't cheap. So, but yeah, guestio.com is a good one to check out. Um, so I line up kind of all the technical stuff. Once I've got my idea, my episodes, at least five or six episodes created, um, get my artwork. I'd spend a good amount of time on my artwork, I would say. So if artwork, for those who don't know, it's, it's the pictures that you see in Apple podcasts. Um, those I'd spend probably 200, $250 on that to, you know, to get really, really done nicely. Cause if you don't have that done well, it's going to be hard to get credibility and yeah. hard to have a good, uh, first impression. So all that stuff, step three, get technical stuff, um, set up and out the way my podcast submitted to Apple and all the other places. Um, and then four, I would look at partners. So what people in my space, and if we're talking about podcasting, there's a lot of microphone companies. There's a lot of, um, software companies. What could I, who could I partner with that would, I could give away something of theirs for free in exchange for them promoting me on their Instagram, social, Facebook, email list, whatever, whatever they'll give me. You can do this with multiple partners. Do not do it just one. So I'd create some kind of unique offer, unique giveaway in the podcasting space, reach out to three or four companies, see if they would give me something for free in exchange for me promoting their, their product or service on my show um, yep. and rinse and repeat that probably once a quarter. So that's how I would get my, get my listeners kind of off, get it off the ground. And then obviously, of course, like we mentioned before, Sam was sending the podcast to people who have questions for me or sending the podcast, answering comments on social media with my link to my episode. Like, yeah. oh, I talked about this specific topic on this episode. So yeah. start engaging with people online um, yeah. and start to talk to them about their problems in my, my subject matter. Awesome. That's great. Thanks so much for that, Lewis. Really appreciate yeah. that. Um, all right. Well, mate, just want to say thank you so much for coming on the show. We'll wrap it up here. But um, for anyone that's wanting to find Lewis and learn more about him and what he has to offer. So um, just head on to top10podcasts.com. Yep. Um, yep, yep. He has a whole range of, um, you know, free content up there. You can book a free roadmap session with Lewis to help you launch and scale your podcast. Um, he's got his socials as well. What's your Instagram, Lewis? Uh, it's at Luis Ryan Diaz. That's, that's it. We'll have a link in the show notes as well. Don't worry. So I'll all be there. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> all right, man. Well, again, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Dude, thanks so much. Thanks.